Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem number of closed islands. We're given a 2D grid consisting of zeros and ones. I'll magnify the example a little bit over here. It's a little bit opposite this time because zeros actually are land and the ones are water. An island in this case is defined as some piece of land that is connected in four directions. So zeros can be connected like vertically or horizontally like this. They can't be connected diagonally, so these two are not the same island. This is like its own separate island, and this is its own separate island. Now, this island is kind of interesting because it's actually wrapped around some water over here, but that still does count as an island. Like this stuff over here does count. So among all of these, I think I can count about four separate islands. But that's not what we care about. Among all of these islands, we want to know how many of them are closed islands. A closed island is defined as being basically surrounded by water in every single direction. Well, wouldn't every island be surrounded by water? Well, the ones that aren't are the ones that kind of border the edge of the grid here. You can see that this guy over here, I probably shouldn't have used blue by the way, because that looks like water, but oh well. This guy over here is not a closed island. Yes, there's water over here, and water over here, but there's no water here or here. It's bordering the edge of the grid. So this is not a closed island. Same with this guy. It's clearly bordering the edge, not a closed island. This one is a closed island because on the left over here, we can see water on the right, there's water, top there's water, and bottom there's water. This is a closed island. And this one as well is a closed island because everywhere on the outside, there is water and it technically is next to some water on the inside as well. The important thing though is it's not bordering the edge of the grid. So now we've made this problem pretty easy, at least easy to understand, but now what kind of algorithm can we use? Well, pretty much any graph algorithm, whether you wanna use DFS or BFS, it's up to you. I'm gonna stick with DFS, but the idea is gonna be the same regardless of which algorithm you choose. For us to determine if this island or this island or any of the other islands is a closed island or not, we're going to run depth first search on this island. We could start at any position. We could start here, here, doesn't matter. So let's just say we start here. Now we're running depth first search. We're gonna basically go in all four directions, recursively here, here, and here. We're gonna keep going until we reach some base case. That's what you do with recursion. And in our case, we're gonna stop once we reach water. So here, if we went up, we see there's water over here. Okay, that's good. We don't have to keep going in that direction. We try to go left over here, there's water. We don't have to keep going there. When we go down though, this is a piece of land. And when we go right, this is also a piece of land. On these two positions, we're gonna recursively keep running depth first search. So let's say we started at the bottom one. Now we're gonna go left, there's water. We're gonna go right, there's water. We're gonna go up. Now here is the part where we don't wanna get stuck in an infinite loop. If we go up, then we're gonna go here, then we're gonna go down, then we're gonna go back up. We don't wanna get stuck in an infinite loop. So after we visit a position like this one, let's cross it out. But in terms of code, we'll mark it visited. The way I'm gonna do it is with a hash set because I think that's the safest thing to do. You could also actually overwrite the value in the grid. You could probably change it to a one to represent water. That would probably work in this problem. You could also change it to a two to say it's land, but it's been visited. Doesn't really matter, but it's possible we might not be allowed to update the input grid. So I'm gonna stick with the hash set so that we don't kind of make that risk, but probably in a real interview, it's worth clarifying with your interviewer. Now, going back to this position, we're gonna go down, we're gonna visit this, we're gonna go left, can't go there, can't go down, we're gonna go right, and basically what's gonna happen is, if you're familiar with DFS, we're gonna end up visiting everything, and every time we try going out of bounds, we're not gonna be able to. We're never gonna reach the perimeter of the grid, and since we don't reach the perimeter, that means this is going to be a closed island and we'll know that after we visit every single position. So we found one closed island here. If we run DFS on this guy, maybe just starting at this point, we're gonna try to go left, that's water. We're gonna try to go down, that's more land. We're gonna try to go right, whoops, that's out of bounds. Up is also out of bounds. So as soon as we get there, we probably don't even need to continue the DFS. We will know immediately 
that this is not a closed island. We can do the same algorithm on this guy. It's not a closed island. This one is a closed island. So we counted in total two closed islands. That's what we're gonna return just like in this example over here. Now, the last thing, is how do we run a DFS on all of the islands? How do we even identify where islands are? The easiest way is basically to go position by position with basically a nested for loop. Anytime there's a one, we don't need to run DFS. So we're not gonna run DFS on the ones. We only care about the islands. Anytime we see a zero though, we are going to run DFS. So in this case, we see that first zero, let's run DFS on this position. Now we'd figure out that this is not a closed island and we'd also end up visiting maybe these two positions in the process of doing that. So we would also mark those as visited. That's gonna be important because as we iterate through row by row, we're not gonna visit this. Here we would figure out that yes, this is a closed island and we'd end up visiting all of these in the process of doing that. I'll mark those red just to kind of show you what I'm trying to point out here. And next, as we still go row by row, we already visited this, then we're gonna get here, but we don't have to rerun DFS on this island. We already know it's a closed island. And since we marked those visited, we will know that we don't have to rerun DFS on this island. Using that kind of technique, that will basically guarantee that we pretty much visit each position only like once or technically a couple, maybe three or four times. But still, it is telling us that the overall time complexity is going to be the size of the grid, which let's say is N rows and M columns. So the overall time complexity is going to be N times M. The space complexity is going to be the same because remember, we do have our visit hash set. I mean, technically, we could use the grid if we really want wanted to. It's up to you if you want to, but I'm going to assume that we can't modify the input grid. So now let's code this up. So the first thing I like to do with 2D grid problems is just get the dimensions of the grid because usually we need them multiple times. So I'm going to get the number of rows, which I can get by taking the length of the grid. I'm going to get the number of columns by taking the length of the first row. And I'm also going to declare our visit hash set since we know we're going to be needing that. And then I'm going to first refresh to fix this leak code syntax highlighting. And then I'm going to declare our DFS, which I'm not going to fill out quite yet, but we know the way we're going to use this is just by iterating over our entire grid. So for R in range, the number of rows that we got up above and for C in range of the number of columns that we got up above. This is a position in our grid. We want to run DFS on this position, passing in the row and column. We aren't gonna pass in the visit hash set because we have our function defined in the scope where it will be able to access this visit hash set. But remember, we only wanna run DFS on positions that are land. So basically the value at this position is going to be zero, or we can say not this position or this value. But remember also, we don't wanna run DFS on the same position twice. So let's make sure that this has not been visited. This is not in our visit hash set. Then we can run this DFS. And we're gonna use the result of that DFS to update our result. Remember, our result is gonna be the count of the closed islands. I usually just call it result and initialize it to zero, but maybe a better name would be count or count of closed islands. It's up to you. Now, one approach here would be to return true or false if we have a closed island or not. And then here we could say, if this returns true, then let's go ahead and increment our result by one. That's a completely valid way to do it, but a slightly easier way, in my opinion, would be just to, if this is a closed island, return one. If it's not a closed island, return zero. That way, we can do this. We can just take the return value of the DFS and increment our result with that value. Well, let me go ahead and add the equal sign. That's what we can do. If this returns one, that means it was a closed island. In that case, we would wanna increment our result by one. If it's not, then we're gonna increment it by zero, AKA do nothing. So it pretty much works out. And after that, we would just go ahead and return the result. Even if you don't know how to do DFS, in a real interview, I think you'd be able to get this far probably. Maybe you wouldn't have like the visit stuff, but otherwise you'd probably know this much. Now let's try to actually fill in the DFS. There's a couple cases. 
One case is where this is not a closed island. That would only happen if we went out of bounds. So basically our row is less than zero or our column is less than zero. They're too small. The opposite case is where they're too big. So our row is equal to the number of rows or our column is equal to the number of columns. We don't need to check if it's even greater than that because it won't really be possible for us to go that far out of bounds. We only really go out of bounds by one. That's why I'm checking it this way. Now, if any of these are true, that means this is not a closed island, but we're not going to return false. Remember, we're going to return zero. This basically means false. So I'll just add that comment. But the other case is where this is a closed island. And that would pretty much only happen where the grid value at this position is equal to one. That's the other edge case. Because remember, if this is zero, if the value here is zero, that means it's land. That means we have to continue to run DFS on that piece of land. Well, only if it's unvisited land, remember? So actually there is a second case here. So either this is equal to water or this position has already been visited. So we can check that by checking, is this in our visit hash set? If either of these are true, we are gonna return one, AKA true, this is a closed island, at least so far, as far as we can tell, this is a closed island. Now, if we ever find a zero, or if we ever go out of bounds, we'll pretty much know that this is not a closed island. Knowing that, I'm going to, well, first of all, let's not forget we do have some parameters in this DFS, the row and the column. And also, once we encounter a position, once we get this far in our method, we know that this is unvisited, so let's go ahead and mark it as visited. So let's learn how to type here. But this position is now visited. Before, it was not but now it is. And also we want to now run DFS on all four of the neighbors. You can do that multiple ways. The way I'm gonna do it is by just making a call to DFS four times. So I'm gonna say DFS on row plus one at the column position, DFS at row minus one, and the same column position, a DFS at the same row, but column plus one. And lastly, DFS at the same row, column minus one. Now among all of these, what do we care about? Let me ask you that. If all of these return one, what does that mean? That means for sure this must be a closed island. But what if all of these return zero? Well, that means this must not be a closed island. What if a couple of them return zero and a couple of them return one? That means we were able to reach the edge of the grid if some of them return zero. That means this can't possibly be a closed island. So basically, if we ever return zero, that means this is not a closed island. A really easy way to check that is actually just take the minimum of all four of these, right? Because we just want to know, was there a zero or not? So I'm literally just going to go ahead and do exactly that, get the minimum. And then I'm going to go ahead and just return that minimum. So if any of these were zero, we're going to return zero. If all of these were one, then we're gonna return one. That's exactly what we want. And that's pretty much it. So now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. I will quickly mention that we technically aren't immediately returning if we encounter a zero. Like we will actually make a DFS in all four directions, but I think the overall time complexity is still the same, so it's not a big deal. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.